Solving trig equations by squaring each side. Again, we want to solve for x, find all exact radian solutions. Take a look at the equation. It's pretty simple looking, but the main problem is I have a sine, I have a cosine. When you've got two different trig functions like that, the problem tends to be a little more complicated. Can I use an identity? I don't really see one. Nobody's squared here, so I don't really have an identity I can use. Well, in this situation, one technique that you can try is called squaring each side. You know that that's a valid algebra step. You can take each side of the equation and square it. The only problem with that method from algebra is that when you square things, a lot of information about negative numbers is lost, right? Whether you have a positive or a negative, when you square it, it turns everything positive. And so because of that, this is an algebra rule, when you square both sides of an equation, you have to check at the end to make sure your answers really work in that particular equation. Let's take a look. How would I square this left side? Well, that's going to be a FOIL problem. I'm going to have to take that sine x plus cosine x and multiply it by itself. Obviously, 1 squared is just 1. So here I will get sine squared x. The outer and the inner terms match. I have a sine x cosine x and another sine x cosine x. So I'm going to end up with two of those, two sine x cosine x's. The last looks like cosine x times cosine x, which is cosine squared x. Of course, at first glance, you might think, well, how in the world did this help me? It looks like we've made it worse. We haven't made it worse. It's actually gotten a lot better because once you start having sine squareds and cosine squareds, maybe there's some identity stuff that can happen. And this one is particularly nice because I see sine squared x plus cosine squared x. That's just 1. And then I notice that I've got that 1 on each side that I can easily subtract out, leaving me with just 2 sine x cosine x equals 0. Now, it's easy to look at this and think, yeah, but how have we accomplished anything? We used to have both sine and cosine. We still have both sine and cosine. Yes, but now we're in a much better spot because all of these pieces are being multiplied together which means they are factored. This is already in a factored format. I have a zero on the other side. Well, that's perfect. If you have a bunch of factors being multiplied and the answer is zero, then you know at least one of these pieces is equal to zero. Well, it's obviously not the two. It could be that the sine x is equal to zero, or it could be that the cosine x is equal to zero. And just like that, I've accomplished that step A that we always talk about. I've turned the original equation into two simpler equations that fit the pattern that we like. Well, let's go ahead and solve each one. I'm seeing all those zeros, which makes me know I'm going to be drawing unit circle pictures here. So for the first one, let's see, where is the B coordinate zero? That would happen here at the point 1, 0. It would also happen over here at the point negative 1 comma 0. So I'll end up with 0 radians or pi radians from that picture. For the cosine equation I'll also go to the unit circle. Now I want an a coordinate of 0. Well that happens here up at the top and here down at the bottom. So my two angles that I've ended up with in this picture would be 90 degrees pi over 2 and then down at the bottom, 270 would be 3 pi over 2. So I've ended up with four possible solutions, four solutions that are within one period. Now here's the thing. Remember, when you square both sides, you may end up with answers that don't actually work in the original equation. Sure, they work in the squared equation, but that doesn't really matter. I need them to work in the original equation. And so what you're going to have to do at this point is take the original equation and one by one plug those four answers in to see if they really work. We can do this quickly. I'll plug in 0 first. Let's see. I can just use these pictures we have right here. Uh, 0 radians. We have it right here. It's that point 1, 0. The sine is the b and the cosine is the a. And sure enough, I get 1. That's good. That's what I wanted. I want this to come out to be 1. So 0 is a good answer. How about plugging in pi? That would be this angle right here. You can see the coordinates, the sine coordinate, the b coordinate is 0. The cosine would be the a, which is negative 1. 0 plus negative 1 is negative 1. 
that's bad. That means this pi solution that we thought was an answer is not. I'm going to have to throw it out. Okay, let's check the other two. How about pi over 2? You can see those coordinates right here. The b is 1, the a is 0. Great, 1 plus 0 is 1. That one looks great. And then finally the 3 pi over 2. Well, I think you can see we're going to have a problem. Here's the angle. The sine value gives me a negative 1 plus the 0 for an answer of negative 1. Again, that's bad. So the 3 pi over 2 that we thought was a solution is, in fact, not a solution. Notice that it's the ones involving the negative signs that ended up being thrown out. We lost that negative sign information when we squared both sides. So we have ended up with two and only two solutions within one period, 0 and pi over 2. I want to write down all the solutions. Well, I can do that quickly here at the end. I just need to take those two solutions we found and add multiples of 2 pi. The first one would be 0 plus multiples of 2 pi. I don't even have to write down the 0, so just 2k pi. And the second set of answers would be pi over 2 plus multiples of 2 pi. Those are all of the solutions to that equation. Thanks for watching.